Civilization or Barbarism, an Authentic Anthropology, by Dr. Sheikh Antajak. Because of this very fact, the details, the whole painting, or the sculpture, Negro art, end up revealing a universe in which the incomprehensible particularities triumph over the universal traits common to all of humanity, and in which the human message that the work of art carries is not appreciated because of lack of education. Thus, in the present state of the artistic education in the world, even in the realm of the plastic arts, cultural customs tend to favor the existence of residual cultural centers whose cultural substance cannot be grasped and appreciated except from the inside. If we take African music or dance, the findings are similar. Even if by our imagination we strip our ballads of all their ethnographic and brutally erotic character. A Western musologist with the best intentions after many efforts at adapt adaptation confesses to have heard only cacophony after listening to the religious music and songs of the Marides in synagogue after Westerners say the same thing about the Griot songs, which are among the most beautiful epic solos of the pre-colonial epic. I heard a great Western intellectual describe a part of Hindu music where all the Hindu listeners fell into ecstasy while he remained completely cold and indifferent, not being able to appreciate said music. One can thus say that in every culture, there are two domains, a specific level to which, in fact, corresponds a specific conceptual apparatus. It is the most dense level where the fundamental elements of the culture are elaborated, which maintain it as a center from which its effect, effects will radiate. This nucleus can explode or perish as a cell then there is no longer any cultural radiance. And yet, all the phenomena that occur are practically impossible to express through universal concepts in accordance with the above. If one who is foreign to this culture tries to penetrate it, he runs into a psychological barrier. One could almost say a barrier of potential. A second cultural level would correspond to the universal concepts. If we had the right to use the atomic image for the convenience of this account, we would say that cultures interfere with each other, especially at the level of their radiance outside of their specific nuclei, at the level of their electronic charges, and that this domain is surely that of universal relations. But this atomistic conception could very rapidly lead to dangerous and erroneous mechanis mechanistic views. Factors that can be called cultural invariants must also be studied, meaning elements left untouched by the revolutionary cultural transformations, even by the radical ones. The deep aesthetic sentiment, for instance, the grace of the dancer and the athlete of Western and socialist countries, the cultural and social invariants, typically Western, that can be found after the Bolshevik Revolution in Lenin, Stalin, and Trotsky. Finally, one can see that no matter what the mode of knowledge with which the problems are viewed, the conclusions of this account remain the same. And that concludes chapter 15. Hi, it's Hawk. Civilizational barbarism will continue.